<laughs> hello, everybody. Hello, hello. Welcome to Wednesday. I need to find a word to do with painting that starts with a W or to do with live streaming so that I can come up with a snappy name for my Wednesday streams because they do seem to be steadily happening on Wednesdays now. Welcome everyone. Um, please let me know if you can hear me okay. And if the sound is all right, I'm hopefully not, looks a little high, I'm hopefully not distorting or anything. If you're on Facebook, please leave me a little comment just to say that you can hear me okay and you can see me or that you can see thank you lisa that's lovely to know um if i wave my hand around you should see things happening on the screen i don't usually have a camera on me when i do these streams because you know <laughs> thanks marilyn tasha nice to see you Logan, you win. you won. You were the first in the chat today. Let me tell you what's happening today. Okay. So what you will see on the screen is a reference photo to the right, which is actually a photo of a subject which I still have sitting in front of me. So I've got the From Life version in front of me as well, if you like, on my still life stand. Now here, this is um, <clears throat> a value study which is the result of a demo I did on um, Monday, part of a workshop I'm teaching at the moment. And it's about painting with big shapes, um, edges. Uh, it's about values and composition and creating strong starts. So none of the values are really, you could say, are right in this. It's been basically done by a wipeout technique, okay? So I already have this here, but what I love about this method is that you end up with this very soft kind of textured start, you know. And then someone was asking me, one of the people who, who's uh, on the workshop asking me, would you glaze over that to make it into a color version? And I thought, you know what? Um... Hi, Marianne. I thought, well, <clears throat> I haven't done any glazing for a long time and I wasn't actually planning to do it, but I thought, you know, that actually would be a really interesting thing to do. And let me tell you something else about um, the way that I've been thinking about painting lately is uh, what you probably, if you were here two weeks ago when I did a live stream, you will have seen me paint this, which is also a value study, a full range value study, which was done in a, a different method. This is all painted. But this is probably best thought of as a monochrome painting because all of the colours in it are yellow. Yes, they're very low chroma yellows and all different values, but they're all yellows, right? So I've been tending towards it. I've, I've been getting interested in like monochrome painting, not so much value studies, but monochrome painting and wondering about whether there's an interface, there's something that can happen between this, what I'm teaching here, and this idea I've got of something, a kind of painting which is halfway between a full color painting and a drawing, and a value, a value drawing. I'm just trying to explain what I'm doing, you know. So, and I'm also letting you know that what I'm going to be after today isn't accurate color. Now, I'm obviously known pretty much for using Munsell and, and for teaching color accuracy, you know. Um, I'm not going to be doing that today. <laughs> Love the demonstration already. Haven't started yet, though. We will soon. Um, <clears throat> Elaine says, I'm cogitating about buying the Munsell book. It's so expensive. Can you please remind me which edition of the student book you recommend? Um, the latest one is edition six. Although I have it on good authority that um, edition seven is going to be out before too long, perhaps in a year or so. It will, the chips will be the same though. Um, I know about that because they, the publisher has been in touch with me and asked me to contribute to it. So I probably will. Um, very nice to be asked. Hello, Ava. Nice to see you. 
Hi, Fran. Hi, Ryan. I'm happy that you're here. Good morning, Rhonda. So, listen, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you the basic processes, like uh, the way that I would approach glazing, right? So, some parts, the lights, the light parts I'm going to work into with opaque paint, but in the shadow areas and the, and the kind of the mid values, I'm going to glaze because I want to keep all of this softness and those br lovely brush strokes. So what I've got in here is just linseed oil. This is a makeup brush. So this is completely dry now, you know, it was painted two days ago. It's, this was painted with lead white, uh, ivory black and um, raw umber mixed. So I'm just going to cover the whole thing with a thin layer of oil. The nice thing about these makeup brushes is you can kind of, you can push the oil into the surface so it gets into the little crevices of the paint. It doesn't sit on the top and it, you get a really nice even covering, all right? So this basically means I'm now working wet into wet. I've got a wet surface to paint on, great. Let me tell you what I've got on the palette. Actually, I'll make the palette full screen while I'm showing you this. Um, <clears throat> so the main object is yellow, right? These quinces, this main quince, especially at the front. So I've got three yellows. I'm going to explain what I've got on the palette here and also why they're there, right? So of my yellows, I've got, why have I got three yellows, you know? Well, it's because the local color of this quince is somewhere between an orange yellow and a green yellow, right? So this is cadmium yellow. And this is cadmium yellow lemon. All these paints are Michael Harding, by the way. So the actual colors that I've mixed here, which are from light to shadow of the lemon, this is like classic Munseling, a form modeling string. The actual, the local color is in between these. So I've got both of those so I can mix these colors, light through to shadow, half tone, shadow, light. Um, <clears throat> the reason I've got this one here is because I've got a leaf here as well. And this is, an aralide yellow. In Michael Harding, he calls it um, bright yellow lake. And that mixed with ivory black and a thalo green will give me a really nice green for the leaf if I decide to put the leaf in. Undecided. So as we go down from light to shadow, it starts off as quite a greenish yellow and then it gets slightly more towards orange. Warmer, you could say. So I've got yellow ochre here, which is an orange yellow. So as I go down the value range, The chroma drops, the value drops, and the hue goes a little bit towards orange, okay? So that's my kind of yellows, at least down as far as this color here is concerned. Next, I'm gonna tell you about these two. This is dioxazine purple and quinacridone rose. Why are they there? There's nothing purple or orange in here. No, but the cloth tends slightly, very slightly towards a reddish purple in the lights. Really low chroma, but it's there. So I want those there for the cloth and lights. Don't know if I'm gonna use them or not. Then I've got green gold and transparent red oxide. Now I've got these because this gives me way down the value range, down near the bottom of the value range, like just to show you like how low these are. The green gold, that's gonna be like a two and a half, yeah, value two and a half, like right down the bottom of the value range. Transparent red oxide gonna be about a two. Yeah, about a two, maybe even a one and a half. So this gives me a lot of chroma on two sides of the hue wheel at the bottom of the value range. So that's really useful for doing my shadow colors, right? For my quince. Because hue-wise, it's in between these two. Then I've got raw umber, which I just always have on there because it's just a very useful color. And I've got ivory black. I've got thalo green because, as I said earlier on, with ivory black, which is basically a blue, thalo green and this yellow, I can make a really good leaf green. But I'm not going to be thinking about that yet. I don't know if it's going to go in. Oh, I haven't got any white. Let's put some white out. Bit of white. This is lead white, Rublev lead white. And it is just wonderful, wonderful paint. I mean, like off the scale, nice. Probably my favorite lead whites are Rublev. This one is lead white number two in walnut oil.
Um, Heather says, seem to be muted on YouTube. I suspect it's your device because I think everyone else can hear me okay. You can all hear me all right on YouTube, can't you? I hope so. Listen, let's get started. Let's, let's give you something to watch because I think this, today is going to be exciting and interesting even if this painting goes horribly wrong because today is a little bit of an experiment. So I'm going to start off. So I've got this idea, as I was saying earlier on, about a kind of a almost a monochrome drawing approach to painting, but with so somewhere between this and an actual full color painting I'm thinking about. So looking at this, I want to bring some of the values down, but I don't want to bring them all right down straight away because there might be you know, something I kind of like about this narrow value range. This just has a feeling to it that I like. I don't want to lose too much. But at the moment, it's sort of neutral tending towards orange. Because the brown is just a low chroma orange. This is yellow. These are all yellows. And I like this more. So I'm going to push it yellow. But I don't want to push it too far. So remember, I've got my layer of oil on. I'm going to try and tone this whole thing just to change it. This is not a way that I have ever painted before. Although the technique of glazing is one that I do have used before. That's probably going to be too much chroma. I'll put a tiny bit of black. So this is raw umber. I'm pulling it a little bit towards green. So I'll end up with something in the yellow range with the green gold. I'm putting in a little bit of black to drop the chroma. I'm not going to put any, should I put any white in it? I'm not going to put any white in it because I have the idea that if, you know, I mean, it, there is an approach to oil painting where you make sure you have no whites in your shadows. Um, I was reading something interesting about Emil Carlson, the still life painter recently, and apparently he, he, as a, from an influence of the Impressionists, he added white to all of his colours. But I'm not going to do that to start with. I'm going to see what happens with this. So I, I have a lot of control over how much of this I put on, you know. It's going to be very, that's going to be very dark though, isn't it? Do I want it to be lighter than that? I don't know. Undecided. I want to keep this sort of lightish shimmer. You know what? I am going to put a little bit of white in it. This is lead white as well, so it will be slightly transparent. I just want to bring that value up a little bit before I just kind of clag it all over the painting. So I'm, uh, as you probably realised by now, I think I've said already, I'm figuring this out as I go. Um, this is not a process I've ever used before. Uh, when I'm painting, but it's just something that I've had in my mind for a while and I've just have been wanting to try what happens if I send this whole thing this way. It's like I'm kind of toning the the whole thing. I'm not going to do that cloth in the light, but I'll do it in the shadow. Wipe out, wipe out the light again here. Wild. Thank you everybody for letting me know you can hear me on YouTube. It's good to know. <clears throat> I may zone out a little bit today. Usually I try to keep talking and explaining what I'm doing, but usually I'm not kind of experimenting as I go along. This time this is going to be, for me, this is sort of experimental. So I want it to be unified, like almost... You know what I was saying? Like it's a, 
wiping out the lights a bit. That's interesting. It has a feeling to it, that's for sure. There's a lot of life now. So I wonder if I start painting in some opaque paint in lights. I'm not going to go straight in on the quince, I don't think, because I want to I'm a bit nervous about it, to be honest. I don't want to. I don't want to spoil it. Uh, this is probably deeply unwise for me to be doing like live experiments with paint. But sometimes, my good friend, good painter friend Kathleen Spranzer once said to me that painting is basically uh, you've got to be prepared to jump off a cliff <laughs> and, <laughs> and hope for the best. <laughs> So light, the light side of this, <clears throat> um, the bucket, it's going to be more opaque. It's lower in chroma, probably pretty much. Let's put out some more raw umber. Hi, Martin. Good to see you. Hello, Blake. Kathy says I'm holding my breath. <laughs> Me too. Me too. That was probably the most drastic thing I've ever done to a painting at this stage. Raw umber. I want the chroma to be low. See, I've done a lot of painting of spheres and I suppose just generally still life objects, trying to learn about colour and how it works. So I know that when you have a local colour of very low chroma, like this bucket, you actually end up with lower chroma in the lights and a bit more chroma in the shadows. So what I'm trying to do with this sort of approach that I'm taking here is to mirror that in a way so that hopefully I can kind of walk a, a bit of a tightrope bet between something actually being coming, looking convincing, but not being just, a, not being what I would normally do, which would just be like a, a painting of the thing. That seems about the colour that I would paint that with there. So I just want to kind of suggest it a little bit at the moment. This is near neutral. Uh, probably sort out the drawing a little bit while I'm on. So I know some of the people here will also be on the workshop that I'm teaching at the moment. So you will have seen me paint this on Monday, right? So obviously we were doing it from a very different perspective. I wouldn't necessarily recommend that you try what I'm doing now um, because I don't know how it's going to come out. I just don't know. So I'm just looking at the color there and I can see there's some low chroma orange in this bucket as well. So I want to get that in. So I've got a combination of very careful color mixing like here. This is the normal color mixing that I would do for the quince. I've mixed very careful um, for modeling string for the rest of it I'm, I'm kind of I don't want it to be you know I'm looking for something different rather than accurate color today and I'm, I have an idea in my head but I don't I don't know how to create it if that makes sense so I'm just gonna have to see and hopefully I'll end up with something which is perhaps even more interesting than what I had in mind So the choices that I'm making, although they're not carefully uh, worked out like my colour often is when I'm painting, they are kind of based on a lot of the experience of painting from life, you know, so. Well, that's, that's kind of interesting so far. Let's see if I can sort out that shape of that bucket a bit don't you? so it's all it's really yellow now it's got yellow greenish yellow why did i choose greenish yellow because of that thing that i showed you earlier oh that's quite a bit darker that's interesting so glazing if you put down 
a couch first, what they call a cat. Well, a, a, let's just call it a layer of oil and everybody knows what I mean. You have a lot of freedom in how you work it. So I can put the paint down, but I can also remove it. I can wipe it back. So I can soften this edge here just by wiping it back into the shadow and get some really fine control there because I want my edges to be really, really soft. But let's say, uh, thinking about the quince now. Let's, so this is, this is actually the color that I would probably paint this quince. So this, this color here is the local color of the quince. This is like a highlight. So this would be somewhere in between the two. So this is full chroma, you know, here. Whoa. Let's go with it and see. So there's a light plane. Trying to stay very much with simplified planes. There's a light plane there like that. Slightly darker plane above it here. Well, that's interesting. Darker plane underneath as it turns away from the light. This is like half a muncel step down. Then we'd be into half tone. Well, that's interesting. <laughs> Is it too much? See, I was thinking, when I was thinking about this, I was thinking about what if the main object were, main objects in the light at least were painted like with what you could call accurate color, like by which I mean pretty accurate to the color that's actually there. And then, and then the rest of it has this sort of dreamy, almost like a monotone drawing disappearing into kind of vagueness. <laughs> Joe says, I just finished painting the bedroom wall grey. This is so much more interesting. Uh, Linda says, when you get a chance, what are those five monster chips on the right hand side? Yeah, right. So, uh, yeah, I'll tell you, I'll explain a bit about those. Actually, we were talking about this earlier on, Linda and I, over an email conversation. So this is perhaps an interesting time to mention it. I'm, I'm a little bit drawn in by this at the moment, though. Um, so shadow area, probably like this shape. But I will talk about these yellows in a moment. <clears throat> wow, that's popping right out. That's really popping out. Light uh, area. This feels like I'm painting with light. That's really standing out. Ooh. Well, uh, of course, the entire thing may fall apart yet, but so far so good. I'm, I'm liking the the general effect. Uh, this is, the drawing's really out though. That should be up higher, I think. I think my drawing is not very good. No mind, we'll go with it. Reflected light, let's bring in some reflected light. That always shows the form. And here, up into the shadow. Soften this edge. Hmm. Well, this is interesting. I didn't expect it to look like this, but I... 
definitely something I like about it. Uh, let's try and get a... So I'm deliberately using big brushes so that I don't get drawn in to try to draw any, any part of it too carefully. Look lower value shadow there. And also so that I don't, I don't, and I'm using pretty rough brushes as well so that I don't end up with any hard edges. I don't want to introduce, except here, that there and there, they're the only hard edges that I want. Let's soften these edges a little bit, they're a little harsh. And I'm going to try putting in a highlight because this has gone way faster than I thought. I like it. I think I like it a lot. Yeah, I'm going to talk about that yellow, that yellow string in a moment. Just let me get a little way ahead with this shadow colour. Let's try putting in a more accurate shadow colour here. The drawing's really out. I mean, this quince is going to end up fatter than than the one in real life, but never mind. <clears throat> so value-wise in my darks, I've still got nowhere near the bottom of the value range, nowhere near. Uh, I'm thinking about that shaft of light on the back wall now. Where's it, let's get there. What value would that be? Maybe about a five-ish probably would work there. It's, and I want it to be lower chroma because it's going in the light. So I want these shadows to have higher chroma. I know they're the wrong color, you know. I mean, they're really yellow. But if the chroma is right, I'm playing with the values a little bit so to keep the values. I haven't gone right to the bottom of the value range yet. But I want a drop in chroma as it comes up into the light. So I'm going to mix uh, something fairly close to a neutral. So I've got um, lead white, raw umber and ivory black, which is funnily enough is what I used to mix up the value scale for the original painting underneath, which I can't really remember what that looked like now. This has changed it so much. And it makes me wonder, like if you, if you were going to do this, like you could really, is that about a five? A bit dark. You could really... Um, change the feel of the painting depending on what colour you use to kind of to paint over it. Apologies to anyone who is used to me painting with a high level of realism. Today's different. <laughs> Today's different. So I'm going to just try working in a little bit of this near neutral into the light here because I want to intensify this feeling of the shadow coming down behind. <clears throat> Uh, it can go lighter actually than that. Let's use what I used on the side of the bucket, a little bit of that. So I, I, I like this composition, you know, I've got this strong diagonal that comes all the way down to here. So I want to make sure that I keep that. And then you've got this big, obviously the bucket is, is deliberately chosen for its, to create this big round shape. I uh, probably won't be doing an awful lot of detail on that bucket because I'm quite happy for it to be it's just there to be a shape really uh, so I want this to be I'm just reminding myself I want this to exist somewhere between a drawing and a painting and I want it to have a lot of feeling and I, I want it to be very soft well that seemed to work pretty nice I think let it get darker as it comes down here, but still lower chroma. And then a slight chroma change here can show the difference between the wall and 
this quince, if I can work this right and not mess the values up. Let's take it all the way down. This edge would be softer because it's further away. It's slightly harder up here. I'm just, I'm thinking out loud, you know, while I'm painting. I think that's too hard now. Yeah. So for this to feel like light, I, I cast shadow, I want a slightly harder edge here than I've got down there. Let's try and put in a darker shadow color. We're going to need to go down. Letting this go a lot more orange. So this value that I'm putting down is darker than I wanted, but if I paint it thinly, then it's, it's going to be all right, you know. Let's get some little bit of lower value. I'm just going to try something now. I'm just going to put a darker shadow in here. In this cast shadow area here. So the, the, at the moment, that's going to be, if not the lowest value, it'll be quite close to the lowest value. Don't like that. It's standing out. Don't like it. This is a dry brush. S semi synthetic Windsor and Newton Scepter Gold. Good for softening edges. Do you want to have a look a bit closer? I've got another view I can show you. There might be glare on it, but let's see if it works. Um, where is it? I'm sure, it's in here somewhere. Right, yeah. <clears throat> so you can see how rough it is now, you know, how much is going on in the in the kind of the texture. Give this a slightly more organic edge. Let me try and, sorry, I'm going to try and catch up with the messages. It's great how amazing it have been to watch an old master experiment live. Yeah, wouldn't it though? <laughs> I'm, I wouldn't call myself a master though, Lisa. It's nice of you to say that. So, but. Uh, I, I hope I have enough time left in, in my life to, to earn that title, but I, I don't think that I've quite earned it yet. <laughs> um, I want to try a little bit of the white now, of the cloth. So I've painted this particular cloth so many times, I know that it tends towards purple. So I'm going to put a little bit of dioxazine purple in that. And these are tiny touches, a little bit of quinacridone rose because it would be too blue otherwise. And I'm going to put in a little bit of raw umbra, a little bit of black because I want to drop the chroma because it would be too high chroma otherwise. I've overdone it, massively overdone it. That's junk, that mix. Start again. Too much chroma. That's actually probably enough, just with what's left on the palette, enough to send it, send it a little bit more purple. <clears throat> Bring the value down a bit and the chroma with a little bit of raw umber. So this is, I mean, I, I'm obviously you can see I'm mixing on the fly here. I'm not mixing to chips, but um, I am being very, very careful with the values and I'm trying to control the hue and the chroma based on what I already understand about the stuff that I'm painting. Let's have a slightly warmer shadow color as well. Raw umber and white. Um, let me catch up. Alan says, please describe the color string. I will, I will, I will. I'm sorry, I'm really behind. 
Hi, Roberta. Nice to see you. Hello, Casey. I haven't seen you for ages. <laughs> That's a nice thing to say. Corby says, this is scrumptious and it makes me want to run to my workspace and get painting. Really nice. Thank you. Karen, good to see you. Okay, so I'm trying... I'm <clears throat> Does it... I suppose it's ended up looking a little bit old mastery, but that wasn't what I was intending. It's just I wanted this softness. Um, let's put some of this on and see. I think this is probably about a value eight, eight and a half. About an eight. So I'm not pushing to the highest values I can I can go to yet. But this will drop the chroma and it will send it a little bit towards purple. So it should make it. Let's have a slightly lighter version of it as well. It should differentiate it enough from the surroundings, you know, which have gone this kind of yellow. So apart from the quinces, I, I only really want to be using like really low chroma colors so that there's nothing that kind of pulls away from this almost like a drawing even light actually maybe feel of a drawing almost like a you know like those old photos where they would they would take a photo and they would they would color it in for postcards and stuff i suppose it's not quite that i'm going for but A shadow here. I'm going to leave that a little lighter for the moment. I've unfortunately squashed my quince a little bit. The drawing's not great on that. Be an area of light value where the plane changes and we go down into a fold there. Let me go back to the long view. I just wanted you to be able to see kind of close up what's going on. <clears throat> so this is obviously standing out like way too much. Have I gone too light? Have I gone too light? I'm not sure. The bucket would need to be a bit lighter in places, wouldn't it, I think? Like here. Especially there. I'm just sort of uh, um, trying to tease it out a little bit, I suppose, without overdoing it, you know, so I'm painting kind of carefully. Let's, let's just, I'm going to tell you about the yellow string now because I can feel myself like starting to uh, be drawn in to what I'm doing too much and I'll probably stop talking. Um, <clears throat> the yellow string, so this quince, I'm going to take a risk and move it. I'll probably be able to get it back in the same position. This is a lot of the way that I have approached colour for a long time is like this quince here. You know, this Monsel chip is very, very close to the local colour of this quince, you know, slightly lighter probably. But you can hopefully you can see it's very close, right? So then if I if I figure out what colour this is, and I'll tell you what it is for any Monselites out there, it's 5Y, so middle yellow. The value is um, 8.5, so it's right up the top of the value scale. It's like up here. And the chroma is 12. So then I mix a light colour, which is the same hue, but it's as light as I can possibly get, you know, whilst 
without going to white. So that's that color there, the light. And then a slightly darker one so that I can gently turn the form. But this is the same chroma and the same hue, but it's, it's half a value step down. That's this one here. My half tone is actually, it's going down um, in value, which inevitably means it drops in chroma, but it's also gone slightly towards an orange yellow because this is what I was talking about earlier on about the way that colors change across a form. So I didn't check that. I just know that it's gonna work just from experience of having painted a lot of yellow things that um, as the color goes, it starts off as a greenish yellow in the light and then it goes gradually more towards orange. So this is like, you could say this is the next page. I think it will be 2.5 Y. Yeah, so this is 2.5 Y, which is just means it's slightly more orange, just a little bit. Um, and the value is five and the chroma is eight. This shadow color down here has gone even further towards orange. So this is, um, what would that be? Like a 10YR, probably. 10YR, yeah, the value is three. 10YR just means yellow red. So we're going more towards orange as the value goes down and the chroma drops. The chroma will just be as high as I could get. So it says chroma six, but I've gone slightly higher. And that allows me to model the form from light to shadow really, really easily, you know, without sweating over whether I'm getting the colors right or not. Makes this whole process of modeling form like almost once you're used to drawing, if you can draw, right, it makes it almost effortless, you know. And that's based on experience and how I, I, I know that, that color behaves from light to shadow from just the experience of painting a lot of cubes and spheres and, you know, things as well in still life paintings. So I'm experimenting at the moment with bringing a bit more like wider values from the light to the shadow, just on the main subject there. Does that explain the yellow string? Hopefully that explains the yellow string, how, where that color has come from. But obviously in the rest of the painting, I'm completely departing from it. I'm not at all. Um... Uh, you know, none of this color is, I haven't even checked what they are because I want it to be almost like a drawing. That was a mistake. I'm gonna try going a little bit of raw, raw umber in here. It's gonna take it slightly more orange and it's gonna lower the value. So I want this, I do want it still to feel like a like a drawing, almost like a charcoal drawing, but but with paint and with a little a little bit of colour. So I want this general sort of uh, greenish yellow. I want it to influence everything in there. But I say I'm just this is too light. I'm I'm absolutely making this up as I go, and I I haven't painted like this before. Really darker, definitely here though because I'm, I want this, I want this triangle to come right the way down here. So this needs to be a bit lighter. It's tricky because I want to show the triangle, but I need to make sure that I've got a very soft edge here. Otherwise it's not going to work as, as a shaft of light. I want it to I mean, what I'm, I really want, I, I want it, I know I've said this already, but I want it to have some kind of feeling to it, you know. Perhaps more than I would get if I just, if I just painted it straight.
I do need to be careful that even though it's painted like very loosely, I need to make sure that everything's in the right place. Let's try it. Oh. <clears throat> Bonjour. Hi, Lida. Lida says, I like the way you show us how to pull the colours into the light and out of your grey start. It's very exciting. I'm excited myself. Um, but I, I want to keep that kind of slightly monochrome feeling. I'm not sure about the cloth. Maybe it's just a drawing thing. And if I sort this out, it will work better. Something is wrong about this shape. So this is very, it's very, very low chroma, but it's a neutral tending towards purple. Um, I don't like the grey on the bucket, it's wrong, this is too neutral, let me take it out. Actually it works better wiped out, I think. So I, I have in mind that this would be a very interesting way to work on the portrait and I've been Tempted for a long time. I've been thinking about <clears throat> starting to. Uh, oh, I want to paint portraits basically. And I'm thinking about how best to get started with that. And I th I'm thinking about doing a workshop actually. There's a there's a, a place called Raw Umber near me. Has anyone heard of Raw Umber? They do a lot of stuff online and they're just down the road from me. They've had some really good painters over there, and they've got um, Anastasia Pollard is, is painting. They're doing a workshop there in December that I'm very tempted to to join. Been a very long time since I did any portrait or figure work. You know what, this is going a bit better than I thought it would, <laughs> to be honest with you. I don't think I really need to do all that much to it, really. So this has some light on it, so I'm going to drop the chroma by bringing in some neutral, this slightly purplish. <clears throat> and it's really just an experiment to see if this kind of method, this approach will, will make something that works and then if it does it you know I can start to think about well how else would I where would I want to take it what else could I paint this way flowers what would happen things with m more variation of color like what would happen then Something's bothering me about the back wall. Edge, maybe. I know uh, <laughs> Feather says raw umber is the perfect name for you. I know I'm always going on about raw umber. It's just my favorite color. Atmosphere. Yeah, this is what we're, I'm looking for. Atmosphere. Something's wrong where the cloth meets the quince. I 
that's better. And I wonder, you know, how it could be influenced differently if I use different colors. I'm deliberately st still, I'm staying away from the really dark values because I, there's something I like about this narrow range of values. I think the bucket needs to come down a little bit. Inside. Because it's a strong part of the composition. You see the... What's bothering me is that is the I just don't feel I've got the edges right on this shaft of light. I feel it's like too, it's too strong or it's not strong enough or it's not something's not working about it and I'm not really sure what it is. <clears throat> Let's soften this while we're on a little bit. I'm going to put some green on. I'm going to try introducing the, some of the green of the leaf. I think and just see what happens. Um, so I'll show you my green recipe, leaf recipe, ivory black, aralide yellow. This is Michael Harding bright yellow lake. It's a transparent green yellow. So you put those two together and you get a yellow green. And then as it comes up the value range, I'll let it go a little bit more yellow, but also a little bit more neutral. So I've got a neutral there I can use. What value am I on now? I think I probably want to get at least up to a five. And if it goes too yellow, because I'm adding more and more yellow as I go up, I don't think it is. If it went too yellow, I would add the thalo green, but I think in this case it's it's all right. Um, still want to go a step lighter. So I'd, I'll do a lot of this when I'm just mixing colors for things, you know, for something to paint. Like I know I'm going to want light and shadow, so I'll mix a little string. Let's get a a bit of a knackered brush. Put some oil on it. Let's see how close this is to the kind of colour I would want. Pretty close, a little bit lighter even than that though. At the top there where it's in the light. So I'm thinking about what other colors I could use to to kind of affect the um, an underpainting to take it somewhere else. And I think actually a good starting place might be like the really low chroma colors on uh, in the Munsell book. Color is that? It's very light, low chroma green. Value is very high, probably as high as the quinces. Right side. I'm looking at that little bit of the leaf that points up. Do I want it in the composition? I think I probably do. So I'm doing these, the leaves with small flat synthetics. These are Rosemary's Eclipse brushes. Those light bits anyway, I did. I 
I have a cast shadow behind, which is on the quint. So cast shadows always belong to the object they're cast onto, not the object that cast them. So the cast shadow of this leaf is the shadow color of the quince, which is this orange yellow, a little bit darker. Going down in value now just to see what happens. Mm, nice. I still haven't gone to the bottom of the value range though. It's interesting, like, to be able to get, to me anyway, this much sort of life into it without actually getting down the bottom of the value range at all. You know, there's still there's still some some range down there. But when you think about it, you know, you can do a pencil drawing which looks pretty convincing. And pencils have a really narrow value range. So as long as it's coherent, by which I mean I get the relationships right, it should work all right. What do you think, everyone? Is my experiment working? I probably will make my own decision about it, like in a few days. <clears throat> Leave it to stand a little while and, um, and think about it. I'm excited by the possibility of doing like more complex setups this way. And it, it is kind of coming out how I do, envisioned it as like almost like a, a monotone, almost like a colored drawing, you know. But obviously nothing has actually been drawn. It's all been, I should say as well, that when, when the original drawing was done for this, nothing was drawn. It's all been laid out in, in shapes in light and, and dark shapes and that has a big influence on how it looks I think. There's my light yellow brush. Something bothering me here shape wise. The quince I'm, I'm actually really surprised how nicely that's come out with, with such a small amount of work. I like And I want to keep this bucket soft, but I want to be able to see this. I wonder if the problem with the shaft of light is that it's there's too much variation in it that doesn't really... I guess it works all right. Laura, you're very welcome. Could you please tell what, what brush is it that seems that, oh, that is semi-natural, semi-thinsetic. Yeah, this brush that I'm using there is, um, it's a Winsor & Newton Scepter Gold. I, I think now they call this one the One Stroke or something. And it's, uh, it's semi-synthetic flat and it's really nice dry, used dry for um, softening edges. Kathy says, raw umber is incredible. I've learned a lot from their weekly portrait and figure drawings. Cool. Well, this workshop that I'm thinking about doing is actually an in-person workshop. So I would actually be going down there. You know, if I'm going to go, uh, I mean, it's literally 10 minutes away from me. And I, I think Anastasia Pollard is a really good painter as well. Um, if you look her up, she's, you know, her portraits and stuff. She, I think she's really good. So, uh, and she is well-known portrait painter so it would be a good idea to to go and learn from someone who knows what they're about right <laughs> i think thank you lisa
Oh, Sasha, have you have you done a workshop with Anastasia then? Or, or did you do an online thing with her? Lida says, could it be that the bucket needs a semi-hard edge at the top? Ah, well, this is where... Do you want to go out, little man? There you go. I was thinking about that top edge of the bucket, and this is where it comes into, like, I think, kind of personal aesthetic decisions, because I, I looked at it, and I almost did it, and I thought, no, because... I want the only hard edges to be around this area here. And everything else, I mean, to be fair, I've got a little suggestion of hard edges there, but I want everything else to be very soft, you know. And Lisa says, I think the inside of the bucket needs to be darker, but if I change the value of the inside of the bucket, then I need to change this value and this one here all around here everything else it will throw out the balance and everything else will change at the moment the reason i'm not going to the bottom of the value range is because i i like this how can i describe it almost like a almost sort of uh dreamlike softness i'm kind of going for and i, I think as well as having painting with very soft edges um I think not not using the whole of the value range is having that effect as well. And that is something I want to play with a little bit. Almost as if the thing is suffused with light, you know, and uh, and disappearing into light. I, I want this really strong kind of feeling of, of light. <laughs> the general vote is that the... the, the the experiment is, is working. How would you spell her last name? Anastasia Pollard, if you're talking about it, it's P-O-L-L-A-R-D. Karen says her Zorn palette workshop is a good place to start. I think this workshop that she's doing in December, she says, you can either do Zorn palette or, um, you know, whatever you, if you, if you're already all right with colour, then full colour. I, you know, to be honest with you, I'd be tempted to do it like this. I mean, obviously, like colour is one of my sort of, one of my things. So uh, I don't have a problem painting with full colour and painting with accurate colour, but I just want to, how can I say this? That I don't want this to be misinterpreted, but I want to paint with more expressive colour. And by that, I don't mean Impressionism. I don't mean Expressionism. I mean something else, and I'm not sure what it is. That's great to hear, Sasha. I think I'm going to leave this one here because I'm not sure if what I want to do next, or even if there's anything I want to do next. And uh, certainly as far as a, as a way to test out this approach, you know, that I've had in mind, that I've been wanting to, uh, to do a kind of, um, like a, to develop up a monochrome painting, you know, and it's ended up being um, done with a lot of glazing. And that actually ended up being quite fortuitous and I think is something that I'm probably going to do quite a lot more of. Do you want to see the close view again now and see how it looks? I'm, I'm happy with the way the squash is, is, is sitting very kind of, almost like you can touch it. And it's, I always think it's really, it's good. You know you've got your colours pretty right when the imperfections actually look like their physical imperfections of the shape, like this little thing here actually looks like a little nick in it, but it's, it's not, you know, it's just a, I didn't paint it that way deliberately, it just came out. I think that leaf, the edge of that leaf possibly needs to be lighter. But all the time, because I'm in sort of slightly uncharted territory myself here, all the time I'm thinking, well, 
I know that for it to be the right color, it should be lighter, but do I want it to be lighter in the painting or not? Do I want, you know, I know that that edge should be sharp, but do I want it to be sharp in the painting or not? Or do I want it to be disappearing, you know? Because I'm trying to move towards something which is less dependent on uh, that looks real, you know, that looks physically there, but is less dependent on a, a very um, literal translation of the reference. Let's say that's probably a good way to put it. But I think I'm beginning to think that there might be a danger that it kind of looks like I'm trying to produce a sort of an old master type pattern, which I, I'm not, you know, I'm not trying to produce a sort of a, a pastiche of old master painting, you know, that feeling. I don't, that's not what I'm after. I mean, inevitably it's gone that way, I suppose, a little bit. But... Um, Not really what I'm looking for. I'm really happy with how this has come out. I'm going to leave it now. I'm going to leave it here. I'm going to uh, stop the stream here, I think. I would say overall, if there was anything that I would change at this point, I, I think I could possibly have gone a little bit more towards an orange yellow on this quince. And that might have been interesting as a kind of a counterpoint against this very the overall sort of slightly yellow monochrome hue. I'm, I'm very interested to try some other colors for, for the glazing stage. Let me show you, I'll show you another one, another study that I did of the same subject, different crop um, this is, but this is also part of the demo of the workshop. It's a composition of values workshop, but this, so that, that shows you where it started. This is basically how it started, and this is where it's ended up. So you can still see the, the, the influence of the, of the 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 wipeout creation of the painting underneath, um, but it's it's kind of gone somewhere. Oh God! Sorry about this. Little bit of rubbish. That always happens on live streams. Spam on the YouTube channel. <laughs> um, oh, should I have gone to the full value range? I don't know. There's something I like about the softness with a restricted value range like this. So I've gone right up on the lights. Haven't gone right to the top, but almost. So but on the darks, I would guess the lowest I've gone is to about a value, maybe a value two have I gone, two and a half. Where's the darkest bits? Yeah, about two, two and a half is the lowest value. So I could go like way, way darker in some places. But I think I like it the way it's come out. Jay Shelby says, still life with fruits and vegetables is my training theme at the moment. Painting realistic architects. Yeah, I mean, that's, it's a great way to practice. Hi, Michelle, good to see you. Rachel says, soft, gorgeously soft and bright at the same time. <laughs> well, I think that's a good place to end the, uh, it's a good place to end the stream. I'll just answer a couple of questions quickly. Uh, Well, that's a little insulting, David. Why people go onto other people's streams in order to say insulting things, I've no idea. But anyway, um, uh, Karen, yes, you can, you can watch the whole thing. All you need to do is refresh the page that you're on on YouTube and it will go right back to the beginning. Um, and you can watch the whole thing. So it, it will always be up there on my YouTube channel as well. You'll be able to see it there. OK. 
Okay. I'm going to sign off now. Thank you very much, everybody. I will probably make a shorter version of this. Um, take it down to a few minutes to put on my YouTube channel because it's been quite an interesting one to work on, I think, and hopefully quite instructive. Um, thanks for being so lovely and coming along and watching and chatting. And I'll see you again next Wednesday, if not before.